Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, I, I, I'm Chuan Ren Liu from Drex University, and uh, today I'm very happy to be here uh, to share with you our uh, work uh, in using the large scale transit, transit records uh, for the social good. We want to um, automatically detect the pickpocket suspects working on the, uh, our buses and the subways, right? So I think uh, I do not have to uh, introduce a little uh, many background, right? Many of us may have already experienced this. Right? Uh, the first time I experienced this uh, was about 10 years ago. When, when I was a college student, I lost my phone when I was uh, riding a bus. Um, yeah, so the, the, the public trans transportation system is supposed to be safe, right? The vehicles are operated by the professional drivers. They are, they are better than, than, than us, right? But you know, the, the, the buses and the subways, they are public space, and uh, anybody can, can go there. Uh, it's not a, a private space, and uh, there are a lot of people like, like this working there, trying to uh, pick up our wallets, credit cards, phones, and sometimes it's, it's, it's very bad because not only uh, because of the value of the items we lost, uh, it's because some some troubles that make, right? If you lost your um, uh, driver license, you may take one or two days off to get a new one uh, at DMV, right? So, you know, it's also very difficult to actually uh, 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 kick, kick them out, right? They are, they are professionals. They get uh, very good experiences. I don't know if they have training or something, but they pra practice this and uh, that leads to perfection. You, you, even the detectives, the policemen, cannot catch them very efficiently. So we want to have to solve this problem by looking at the, the data we can collect automatically by using the algorithms. Um, the data we use is the transit records. We collect uh, with a smart card, with the automatic fare system uh, installed on buses and the uh, subways. Uh, but I want to just uh, uh, clarify one thing, because uh, in the past two days, I've been discussing the paper with uh, several readers, and uh, I noticed there is a, 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 a tiny confusion, which is that the system um, used in Beijing is quite different uh, in, in some details with the system here, or New York City, or some, some other places. Uh, for example, in New York City, you, when, when you uh, take the subway, you get a, a ticket that's a paper-based. Um, probably you will use that for one or two weeks. And next time, when the money uh, is used up, you may get a new one. And when you get a new one, you do not have to provide your ID or something. You, can, you, you just pay the money, you get a new one. And, but in Beijing, they use a, 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 hard cut, a hard cut. It's like a credit card. You, you keep that. And when the money is gone, you, you, you add money in, uh, into your account, you can keep, keep using that. And uh, uh, because of that, you can link the past activities, the current activities, and you have the ID associated with each account. You can actually know the people, the past behavior, current behavior, and you can based on that to, pre to predict the uh, future behavior. So um, uh, that being said, if you want to transform, for example, this project here, uh, I'm not sure how how uh, all, uh, if that's uh, uh, as effective as, as we have tried in, uh, in, in Beijing. So we use the data from Beijing, and uh, basically we just collect the, 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 the transit records. Every time the passenger get in the bus or get out of the bus, we have, a, we have a data point recorded in the database, and that will be analyzed to uh, distinguish the regular passengers and also the uh, pocket picking search packs. Both of them, they use card. And uh, we want to analyze their trip activities and some kind of frequency like uh, the, the, the time uh, when they were on the bus, we want to based on that to uh, classify the two uh, groups of people. Right. So that's the, basically the problem. We want to use the uh, uh, transportation records to um, identify some anomaly Passengers, right? But it's a it's a very uh, challenging problem because of several reasons. The first one is that we have really large amount of data. The 
the number of records are really, really uh, huge. For, even for one day, we have a million, millions of records there. And um, um, you know, among them, only a tiny fraction of the passengers are actually uh, are potentially the, the suspects for the uh, pocket, pocket picking. So, and also we want to, so this system is, uh, is designed for the detectives, not for the normal passengers, right? Detectives will use this to identify uh, the evidence, identify the hot regions where they may allocate more resources, more, more people, and looking for those bad guys. So we want the system to be uh, effective and efficient, easy to use for that. Um, so we have uh, these, these two challenges, and together uh, we have a highly imbalanced problem because of the, the number of uh, suspects is really, really uh, tiny in comparison with the normal people, the regular passengers. And also this problem is supervised. We, um, uh, we managed to collect some, some labels from the social media in China. And the fact is that the, the policeman, um, when they uh, confirm the suspects, they will, re they will uh, disclose that, that incidents on the social media. They, want, they, they will disclose the location, the time, the, the bus route where they caught the, uh, the pocket pickers. And you can see some examples here. Like the, the in Chinese, basically we have identified this guy, um, uh, picked the phone of another passenger. And uh, this guy picked the, um, uh, the, actually the it, it's like the, the bus ticket, the, the, the card used to get on the bus. Also the victims also uh, sometime will share this kind of instance on the social media. So we manually collect all those kind of reports from the social media, and we identify the time, location, and the route, and we try to, we try to match those kind of reports with respect to our database. And when there is a perfect right match, we will label that, 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 that activity on that day of that passenger as a, as a suspect. And so, we, so the whole problem is actually supervised because we have those kind of uh, reported incidents on the social media. So that's basically the, the, the most important part of the data, well, one, one, of the most, uh, one of the important part of the data, the, the, the why part, we want to predict this based on the, uh, the other part of the data, the transit record, this is the X, and we want to based on the X to predict the Y, right? It's a supervised setting. So for the transit records, it's uh, pretty straightforward. You just, uh, the system just uh, collect one, uh, one record when the passenger get, getting in the bus and another record when the passenger getting out of the bus. And we have a, 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 a for each, for each uh, passenger, we have a sequence of these kind of events. The only thing I want to emphasize is the trip. We, uh, to define some more informative features for each passenger on each day, we, wa we wanted to extract the trips. Um, out of the sequence of transit records. A trip, to identify a trip, we need two things. One is the origin and another one is the destination, right? So uh, on just on one day, one passenger may have several multiple trips and we want to, for each one, we want to identify the origin destination. So the trick we use is that we look at the time duration, time, time, time gap between two consecutive transit records. If there is a gap more than 30 minutes, we say, okay, one, one trip just ended, another one started later, right? So, uh, that thing, uh, so based on this, we have the transit records and the trip. We will use this to define a bunch of the features. And uh, we have a long list of features. And I'm not going to um, explain this one by one because we have uh, a very detailed definition and uh, uh, motivations explained in our paper. Um, uh, we, use, we use the three group, groups of the features and the current behaviors, historical behaviors of each passenger, and also we compare them with their uh, neighbors in the database. So we have three groups. Um, the high level idea we, I want to um, highlight is that um, for the regular travelers, regular uh, passengers, they normally follow some regular patterns. 
uh, this is very clear in Beijing, but I'm not sure if those kind of patterns can be observed significantly here in San Francisco. I'm not sure about that, but in, in Beijing, it's pretty uh, clear. Uh, a lot of people take the bus and the subway for the, for the commuting in the morning and the evening. And uh, some, sometime in the weekend, they take bus for uh, watching movies, uh, go to some, some parks, and uh, uh, getting out of the city. Uh, maybe it's, it's not uh, that significant here, but those kind of regular patterns can be observed for the regular travel travelers. And in comparison, we have the suspects. We analyzed their uh, behaviors. They are more random. They do not particularly follow some pattern, uh, clear pattern. They randomly uh, 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 appear in different areas in the city. The, the, their, their only objective is to maximize their opportunity Makes them their chance to pick up something, right? To get some rewards, and that's basically the, the reason why this kind of this project is feasible. They have they follow different patterns, and we can uh, define some features to um, build a classification model to identify that. So um, this is a formal setting of the problem. We uh, used the uh, typical training and testing. Uh, procedure to evaluate the feasibility of the uh, of uh, of this project. So in the training part, we have the input data labeled, as I mentioned in the beginning. We have the labeled training data x and y. And the y is one if and only if the the x the feature x is associated with a confirmed search fact we identified from the social media. And we want to based on those training data, we want to derive a. Uh, a predictive model, a function f, that can uh, approximate the y based on the feature x, right? And uh, when that is done, we will apply this on the testing data. We want, in the testing data, we, we do not have labor, we have only x we want to um, uh, uh, make the prediction, right? <laughs> so this is, a, again, this is a supervised uh, setting, but highly, highly uh, uh, imbalanced. We have only, um, about, a, about a 1,000 of the suspects every day in our database. So, and our solution to address, to address the highly imbalanced supervised problem is to use this two-step framework. We, originally we want to derive the predicted function f, but to do that, we, uh, we optimize two functions, g and h, Together, they can approximate the f function. And uh, I will give you more details in the next list, but here, the general idea is that we use uh, function g to first remove the regular passengers out of the consideration, because there are a lot, a lot of normal guys. There is no evidence, totally no evidence, no suspicious activities associated. associated. We, we, we have no way to claim the uh, suspects in any way, so we want to first identify those and uh, remove that uh, for, for the for the uh, actual classification, right? So it, it's it's like uh, the undersampling, uh, but we use the model to do that, not just the random undersampling. We use the model G to remove those regular passengers, and uh, after that, the the balance of the two classes will be improved, and we can in the second step we use the we can we can try some classification algorithms to actually uh, uh, separate the normal guys, the regular passengers, and the suspects. Right. So that's the that's general idea. Um, yeah, so, um, and another consideration in using these two-step approaches that we can use, we can uh, improve also the efficiency of the whole, whole, whole procedure. Uh, otherwise, if we, if we use a very um, complicated uh, anomaly detection algorithm, that may take much more time and uh, maybe more difficult in implementing <laughs> that in real time for the, for the whole system to actually be used, right? So for the first step, we tried uh, one class SVM, which is, um, uh, which is unsupervised. Uh, which can identify, uh, which, which can separate the potential suspects, potential suspects, including some, some levels, some amounts of the uh, uh, false positives, 
but we can safely remove those totally, totally uh, regular passengers. So we just, uh, uh, we, we didn't make any change in the one class SFM model. Uh, you can check the details of the model in the original paper. Uh, we, we studied that paper. And we just, uh, the only thing I want to highlight is that we, we use uh, uh, cross-validation in choosing the parameters. And in choosing that parameter, we allow some, some amount of false positives, right? That will be further um, classified in the second step. So um, we just want to use this to improve the balance of the two classes. And in the second step, we can uh, uh, theoretically can try any kind of classification model here because you have uh, uh, roughly balanced the two classes. You can you have the features, you have the labels. You can try to classify them we, again. We use the support vector machine because that's uh, we we found that more um, predictive, and we used the the, the the Gaussian kernel. And again, we use the cross validation to 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 choose uh, to choose all the parameters. And I think that's all, all of the technical details. And it's very intuitive. We use, the, we use this um, a framework to combine one uh, anomaly detection algorithm and another uh, classical um, uh, prediction, uh, classification algorithm together to address this highly imbalanced uh, classification uh, uh, problem, right? So let's now show you some uh, results. And we used the real data collected, uh, collected from the Beijing city, and we used, uh, uh, as a pilot study, we, we used the training data covering three months from three months in 2014, and we test, we, we build a model based on that, and we test the results on the, uh, for the data uh, collected from the following two weeks. And uh, in total, we have, uh, you can see the number, we have a uh, really, really, uh, uh, large scale of uh, record there. Uh, because it's supervised, we use the precision recall and the F score uh, together to evaluate the performance uh, of the uh, two stem framework. And we compared with some alternative uh, approach. And um, the results is shown in the table. And uh, I can see uh, we combined the one class SVM. Uh, plus the, uh, uh, the, the classical uh, SVM as the second step, together we can have a much better precision recall and also F score. And also this can save some time if you compare this algorithm with some uh, very expensive anomaly detection algorithms such as the local uh, outlier factor model. And we, uh, there is another, another, uh, another um, uh, approach, which is the support vector machine itself, that can okay, uh, that that takes only 20 minutes, uh, 20 seconds. But you can see the uh, the, uh, the accuracy is not that good. Also, we tried to evaluate the uh, contribution of different groups of features. So we tried to run the whole thing with different groups of features, and we found that each group we we identified can contribute something new in addition to other other features. So you can see uh, in combining three groups of features, we have the highest uh, accuracy of the, of the detection. So uh, I think that's, that's all. And uh, uh, we are still uh, building the real system that will be used by the actual detectives. And we, um, and we, will, we, we have to uh, address some additional challenges in doing that because, uh, because you can see the current the, the evaluation setting is not real time. We use some, a fixed amount of time for training and another two weeks for testing. But in real, uh, in, in real world, you have to build the system in that can work in real time, every day, right? So yeah, that's it. Questions? Hi, I have two questions. Yeah. Um, so the first question is regarding um, how you mine the information from the Chinese so like, Twitter. Yeah. Um, so, I would like to know more about how you extract the information because I could imagine it's kind of pretty unstructured. Yeah. Um, the second question is, um, so this is like pretty amazing and I could see totally um, extension into um, also using camera feeds because I, I've never been in Beijing but I would assume maybe there's cameras just like in London and yeah. other cities. Yeah. So how would you augment 
perhaps facial recognition or just dudes acting kind of suspicious. I mean, um, in order to um, further refine and provide more um, observations okay. to your algorithm. So if yeah. you can speak about that. Yeah, yeah thank you. Great questions. Uh, for, for the first one, um, the whole, whole uh, um, analyzing, who processing, analyzing the social re the reporting on social media and uh, matching that with our data records. The whole process is not uh, totally automatic. We do, we, we, we did a lot of manual work actually. So, and it's not that easy actually, uh, because sometimes we have a report like uh, happened uh, someday, somewhere, some, some bus there is a reported event, and you cannot identify a unique uh, suspect. In that case, you, you cannot label very accurately, right? So we remove, we ignore those kind of reports. And we only label our data whenever we can identify a perfect, uh, we almost very, very confident in that case, we label that as a suspect, that we label uh, by one, why, why it will be one you know, for our uh, training and testing, right? So, um, we, so generally we look at the time, location, and the route, right? If that's given, and we can match that with our records in the in the in, in the transportation uh, database, and we will label that. Otherwise, we just ignore that. Right? So that's the first question. And the second question, um, yeah. So um, I, I I I believe we can extend this with additional data sources, but currently we do not have that. Like, like the real time, the uh, the the camera monitoring the public space, right? And uh, there are some many many uh, buses, uh, subways in Beijing. They they have cameras in, in in the vehicle, but we do not have that kind of data right now. But if we have, we may um, achieve better performance, definitely. I think. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, last question. Yeah. So this is very interesting. Thank you for the talk. Thank you. Uh, do you can you mention at the end the prototype system uh, that might be used for, with the police detectives? Yeah. Uh, can you say a bit about your design process for this and how it might fit into or, or change the detectives' existing yeah, process? Yeah, very good question. Um, yeah, so we want, so there are several things uh, I, I, I missed, uh, actually. Um, um, so the first thing I mentioned is that we want to make this system real time, right? So uh, that has to be like that to, to make this useful. And another thing, the interpretability, uh, because the, uh, I don't think the detectives will read the KDD paper, right? They do not understand this, those kind of precision recall F measure. We have to provide some very, very intuitive evidence for the detectives to catch the guy, right? Some evidence and some, uh, also another, another approach is to provide some high level, not a personalized, but high level statistics about some regions. See, this region is like a war zone. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, bad guys working there. So they can allocate more, uh, more policemen uh, to there to, 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 to find those, right? So uh, I think these are uh, several options we are considering, right? One is a personalized, actually identify the guy, and another one is to provide some high-level statistics for them to allocate the resources. Thank Thanks. you. Yeah. Okay, that's the first speaker. Okay. Thank you.